Hiya guys, it's Ross again. Today on the Hobby Desk, I am going to build a snowdrift. Now, this is a small line of sight blocking piece of terrain uh, on the tabletop. Uh, I'm using it for a Hoth tabletop that I'm building for a local club. Uh, but the premise is pretty simple. A small cliff-like edge, so not that kind of line of sight blocking, I'm talking small. So I'm going to angle it with a hot wire cutter, so it's going to be more this kind of angle. And I'm going to use snow flock. So it's a pretty simple process. Um, all you need is a piece of styrofoam, like so. A hard base, so either extremely thick piece of cardboard or ply board. I just keep some old board lying around. I like to bevel the edges so it doesn't look too perfect. Too square would look a bit weird on the tabletop. So here's my piece of styrofoam. Now you can cut it with any old knife, a kitchen knife, whatever you want to use. But if you've watched any of my other videos with polystyrene, I've used hot wire cutters. So this one was only six pounds on eBay. Really, really basic. Even comes with a battery. The battery's like four quid. So why not? And this stuff's really easy to cut with a hot wire cutter. I'll just show you on a small section now. So just hold the trigger and it will just cut through the thing. Not a problem. But the best part of a hot wire cutter is minimal mess. If you try to cut it with a kitchen knife, the little polystyrene balls would go everywhere. But with a hot wire cutter, reasonably smooth edge. Not very really flat in my case, I didn't cut it very well. But that's the idea of the hot wire cutter. So what I'm going to do is cut it to the shape I want and I'm going to come back to you all ready for sticking on and painting. Once you've got your basic shape, so I want a wedgy shape like that, what you can then do is use a hot wire cutter to make some random effects like so. Now it might not seem like much at first, but if you do multiple layers of this, stagger it at different angles. So each time you do it, try to cut the same line as in the same angle going from one side of the piece to the other. But you can vary the pitch, the depth of the cut, so you get a staggered section like so. So now I'm going to do a couple more real deep ones. So you get a bit of a, a rocky wall. Like so. And a couple underneath. And, you know, be as random as you like, after all rocks, nature and all that stuff. You know, never have a real pattern to them. Just take little chunks out here and there of the edges. It's kind of therapeutic in a way, I love this stuff. And there is absolutely no smell with a hot wire cutter either. I mean, if you burn polystyrene with a lighter or something, it will make a horrible smell. But with a hot wire cutter, 
absolutely zero smell. I'll just leave it like that. Put a couple on the top, maybe. Either way, until you're happy with what you got. So just be a bit random. And once you're done with your basic snow drift, stick it to your base. Now, at this stage, it still doesn't have to be terribly neat because you'll be covering the whole thing with snow flock. So we'll just go with that to start with and I'll stick it down. To harden up the edges that you do not want to chip I recommend using some PVA glue and also all-purpose filler so like wood filler a whole pot you can get for about a pound uh, just to clean up any of the pores, plus the filler gives a very fine sand-like texture, more like rock. So what I'm going to suggest is getting a damp brush and some filler. Any of the areas you think is going to be exposed, so any of the areas that isn't going to be covered in flock, Paint it with some wood filler. Just to give it a little bit of texture and to help harden it, reduce the chipping. So polystyrene, you know, if you're using it at home, probably won't chip, probably will get beaten around. But taking it to a club on a regular basis, like myself, it will get packed in and out of boxes every week likely to chip. Prevention is better than cure. So I'm going to whack a thin layer of this on. So a slightly watered down filler. And when it dries, I'll see what it looks like. I might even put a second layer on because I worry this might chip. So any surfaces you want to make it look rocky and will not be exposed and will be exposed from the flock. So I want the flock to be drifted over here and a little bit of the rock to be exposed here. So I'll just put maybe a couple of coats of this fellow on the, the styrofoam. Like so. Okay, so this is what it looks like when the filler is dry. Like I said, I've just done the rocky bits that I think it's going to show. And reasonably pressed with that. Uh, anytime you think it may look a little bit rough and might need a bit of a sandpaper, just lightly with a bit of sandpaper. I can see a little spot, I'm not too happy with it there, just in the rock. I'm just going to smooth it. Not a problem. So, don't be too much of a perfectionist with it, he says, being a perfectionist with it, because rocks obviously all look different. So I'm just roughing it up a little bit. There, yeah, we should leave it alone. Right, next comes the painting. So, I'm going to base paint this thing with a bit of black. And I'm also going to add a tiny bit of blue as well to show a little bit of the cold. So, I'll get my paints ready. Bear me a second. So, there's my black 
and a little bit of blue mixed up. And I'll just apply it. Even if I think the snow is going to cover it, I'm still going to paint that area anyway. I'm going to paint the whole thing just in case any of the flock does come off in the future. At least I know the rocky bits will show through as part of the effect. So the idea of this thing is not to completely cover the, the finished rocky section in flock. You just want a little bit showing, giving the illusion there's rocks underneath the snow. So maybe two nice thick coats because it's a piece of terrain, it's not a miniature after all. Just to make sure everything's nicely covered. Working in or little rough areas. Because no doubt when it dries, you'll see bits that you've missed. Alright, I'll do the whole thing. Come back when it's dry. Okay, so after I painted it a very dark blue, I dry brushed it with a grey, so it's a heavy dry brush. And with the grey had a slight hint of blue in it as well, trying to keep the cold theme. Next I'm going brighter again and I'm putting even more white into it this time. So mix up a little bit of the white. So each time you dry brush you go up a layer. Um, make sure so that's the bottle squeaking, honestly. It's not me. Make sure you um, paint less and less and less on the dry brush. So, like I said, that first layer was quite heavy. The next layer is going to be a lot, lot lighter. So by that I mean practice somewhere that flock's going to be, but I will be this kind of light. Like anything in a hobby, when it comes to painting, it's always best to go lighter. Initially you can always add a little bit more dry brushing. So there you go, not too much. Just a hint. So I added a tiny bit of blue with the white. Give that code feel. And I'll do the lot just in case any of the flock comes off in the future. And a bit more of the rock is exposed than I, I mean to. Alright. Once again, wait until that dries. Then we start adding the flock. Okay, right, so when it comes to the flock, I've got some cheap flock here. Um, now you can use uh, products like Woodland Scenics, they do a very good snow flock. But this literally was a massive, massive bag, what's left of it now, um, for a pound, so I thought I'd give it a go. It's only shredded plastic, and it's not as good as other companies out there by a long shot. But it's cheap, homemade terrain. So I'll see how it goes. Now you could leave it quite fluffy, which is great, so it looks like proper snow. Uh, but the only trouble is, fluffy means it's probably going to come off. So what I want is a mulchy kind of snow, uh, like almost like a, a thick rather than flaky, if that makes sense. And what I'm going to use is some typical PVA glue and. 
I'm actually going to mix it in with the flock. So I will have a separate tub add in at a time just in case it gets out of hand and I get the quantities wrong. So a big goop in there. Lovely, look at that. It's like primary school stuff all over again. Just add a little bit of flock at a time and work it in there. Right. It may be quite thick initially, but it will absorb and will soak it up. You could always use a little bit of water to make it go a bit further. Uh, the only trouble with that is, obviously, it take a lot longer to go off, which PV glue does take a while to go off anyway. But I'll make myself a snow paste. Stir that around for a bit. Okay, so once you've made up the worst porridge ever, please do not eat this, then we'll start scooping it onto the terrain. So remember, I want the rock section at the back to show. So I will scoop and apply heavily. Up until approximately that line. I mean, this is how I'm doing, but obviously skills are transferable. You can have a different shape. You can use different snow flock. It's just how I do it. Every now and again, there's a little bit of rock showing through. That's not a problem. That's the whole illusion. And when it dries, it won't look quite so lumpy and goopy. Look a bit smoother. The idea is it's supposed to look a bit like a snow drift. So the snow is just blown over this rock face. course you can smooth it down a bit as well if you like. Right, now for the rear. Putting plenty on. Okay, I will come back when it's fully done and dry. So leave it approximately 24 hours before you think it's fully dry. Okay, so after 24 hours and it's fully dry, this is what you should get. Bit of a snow drift. You can add, obviously, more or less snow if you want. Just a smackering of snow. But sometimes snow is too perfect, you know, it, it's too smooth, um, it <laughs> looks like it's plaster. Um, but this, this looks more bobbly, it does look like it's been drifted on, blown on, which is fine. Uh, if you want it smoother, you can put more coats on or uh, a thicker mix. And if you want it a bit fluffier, you can always, with your remaining flock, put it over the top and you know I mean that that's fine but that's likely to come off uh, if it's going in and out of a box on a regular basis going to your club getting bashed around so this stuff is built for wear and tear it'll be around for a long long time so there it is pretty simple pretty basic didn't take very long at all the longest bit is waiting for the PVA glue to probably go off so it's generally over 24 hours it's funny hard the PVA glue so yeah this stuff is pretty hard I mean I could 
wait another 24 hours. But I know that this stuff isn't going to chip that easy. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Please hit the like button and even subscribe. Thank you very much. See you next time.